Unicorns and glitter and taxidermy critters are just some of the things they like. They also enjoy 80s hair bands, Grizzly Adams and John Goodman, so if you think that's weird then you can take a hike. But the things they enjoy the most are making art and cracking jokes. So without further ado, here are your hosts. You've got your two artsy gals, your two artsy gals. Here are your two artsy gals. Hey everybody, this is Katie. And this is Lonnie. And you're listening to Two Artsy Gals. Yay! Yay! So, I feel like we don't have a big preamble this time because no. we just recorded something and we yeah. were yippy yappy before. We're going to try to go to lunch. Yeah, my stomach's like, I you're know. done. I am kind of hungry too. <laughs> and now I have this like Pavlovian response to recording with you because then I start <laughs> craving Fat City Cafe. As yep. soon as we're done recording, I'm like, as soon as you get here, I can taste that Even fucking... Even if we had a huge breakfast just before, mm-hmm. we would probably still have the same... Like... Not going to lie. I try to eat a very small breakfast before on days <laughs> that we record because I'm like, we're going to lunch. Yeah. We're going to do it. Yeah. So we're going to lunch when we're done. <laughs> Don't you guys wish you could go? I know you do. Cause we're going to throw fun. them all off being in there on a Tuesday. Yeah. They'll be like, what? 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 I wish Tom would hurry up and heal. My favorite waiter. Oh, yeah. He's got, he had, he dislocated his ankle playing soccer or some shit. Oh, God. Which sounds horrific. Yeah. And so he had yeah. surgery and he. Sports are dangerous. They are dangerous. Make art instead. Stay inside and <laughs> make some art. <laughs> That's bad. I know. I'm terrible. So, I'm disgruntled <laughs> because I haven't been able to work out like recently. Like for like the last three months, it's been a struggle, almost four months because we don't have a car. I know I get sad about how much pain I'm in after. Like I finally got over 10,000 steps the other day because we went down to the Rose Festival. Do you have a Fitbit? Um, my phone has a yeah. thing and, uh, I fucking, I hurt the next day so bad. I was like, ma, why is this so hard? Anyway. I've been really bummed about my plantar fasciitis getting well, in the yeah. way when I try oh. to be more active because it fucking hurts. Yeah. It sucks. But I'm just kind of embracing this downtime right yeah. now. Yeah. Me too. I'm letting my mm-hmm. heels heal. That was weird. <laughs> well, and I'm stuck in this stupid boot for... Two more weeks. Oh, boy. It's dumb. Yeah. I hate it. Also, my husband is telling me that I have incurable stink foot. Oh. Because it smells so bad in my boot. Oh. <laughs> I took it off. the other. Okay. Who does this? I said, oh, my God. I swear this boot is so disgusting. And I've been complaining about it being stinky in, this, in my splint thingy. Mm-hmm. And he's like, whatever. Because, like, he thinks my stinks are cute. Aww. He's like, look, you smell like you stink, but you stink like a girl. <laughs> like, girl stinks different than boy stink, which it totally is. Yeah. But girls can smell bad, bad. Like, mm-hmm. so I told him the other day, I'm like, here, smell my regular foot. He totally smelled my foot. I don't know a single person that is dumb <laughs> enough to smell a foot when someone goes, if someone said, here, smell my foot, I would be like, no, thank you. <laughs> I don't want to smell your foot because when they want you to smell it, it can't be a good smell. Yeah. But he smelled my regular foot and he's like, your, your feet don't stink. And I'm like, no, no, no. Now smell this one. And he goes, oh, <laughs> like he was totally shocked. He was like, oh my God, it's like vinegar. <laughs> so there's that. Awesome. Sorry. I don't even know why I went off on my stink foot, <laughs> my incurable stink foot. <laughs> Do you watch the, 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 Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Yes. Did you watch this season? Not all of it yet. So that's where, like, you'll you'll understand where he got the incurable stink thing from. (laughs) Because it's an an episode of that. But incurable stink tongue. (laughs) (laughs) But he just said my foot. I don't have stink tongue. I brush my teeth regularly and my tongue. Have you noticed that, like, since I quit smoking, I've noticed that my breath is rarely bad. I hope my breath is really bad, but I don't know. Like, I'm kind of paranoid about it. I brush my teeth obsessively. But, yeah. I have noticed that I don't like it. Yeah, when you smoke, you have an awful taste in your mouth most mm-hmm. of the time. It's like, mm, that can't smell good. No. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yuck. Let's Blech. talk about something not gross. Yeah. This is like the gross podcast intro. Ew, Do we have let's... any? Oh my god! Because we talked about farts in the last one too. <laughs> Fart wars. <laughs> Fart wars. I would have won last night. Right. Uh, garlic. I had the most delicious dinner last night. Mm. I'm just telling you right now. It was, we went to Seasons and Regions oh, for our yeah. anniversary dinner. I've never been there, but I've heard good you things. You should go there. It's delicious. If you're in Portland or you visit Portland, go there too. Seasons and Regions. Mm-hmm. Do you have to make reservations? Um, You can make them, but you don't have to. Uh-huh. Although it is pretty crowded. It's a pretty popular place and it's not very big. Yeah. But it's all local. All locally grown, locally caught, locally everything food. Nice. So there's a lot of seafood. Yum. A lot of yummy food. A lot of delicious food. Um, I can't figure out how to segue from that conversation into framing and matting your art. I know. Other than if you frame and mat your own art, maybe you'll be able to afford to go out to dinner once in a while because it is fucking expensive to have it done. Holy crap, yes. Like, Even with a 70% off coupon like, at Michael's. It's a very cost prohibitive. Uh, like, I can't why? afford that. Honestly, I really, truly cannot. I know. I did one time, I, my friend made this piece, so I was like, I'm going to go have it framed. I have a coupon. And it was still, like, almost $200. Yes. Yeah. Why? And I was reading in a couple of articles when I was researching this topic, and across the board artists and people say that this is like the it is so horrifically inflated like there's okay, no yeah. reason for it to be that expensive okay truly yeah. i mean they're using matte board mm-hmm. and... but it's something that you can do yourself with just the investment of a matte cutter which is they're around 30 they average about 35 dollars that's way better than two hundred dollars. Yeah. For, yeah. Well, even and I think the mat cutters, like my in laws, gave me a mat cutter that has the ruler thing that it sticks onto and it slides back and forth. Mm-hmm. Even if you're spending like that's a, that's a bit more expensive, but mm-hmm. you're still use it once and it's use paid it itself. one time, uh-huh. literally one time, and it has paid for itself mm-hmm. probably twice over. Yeah. To be honest, depending on what you're having framed. Yeah. Like, it is insane. I don't even, like, I think I wanted to have something framed for my mom several years ago. And I had a coupon for Joanne's. Mm -hmm. And where they have in the back, they have their framing. And it's always like 70%. So you think, oh, this is going to be great. I can, I can afford this. If I get 70% off. Um, hello. <laughs> so that means that like $200 is 70% of. Yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, granted you're getting the frame. And this UV protective glass. But that's all shit you can buy yourself. Yeah. And it's not that expensive. Yeah. We're going to talk about frames. I actually didn't do a lot of. I'm glad you mentioned UV protective glass because I didn't even think to research for like glass stuff. Yeah, it's supposed to keep your. But you want you want UV protective glass. Yeah. So there's that. Um, But I do think that sometimes it's important to frame artwork and photographs. Mm -hmm. Um, I think if you're an artist and you are trying to sell your work that is on paper. Having it framed and matted kind of gives it the more professional look. Yeah, I have to say I love the way this turned out because it was a, a lino cut. Lino? Yeah, lino uh, cut. Lino cut that my friend did. And then she had uh, the edges of the paper were frayed. And so they kind of floated it. Uh huh. And with the mat. And it looks really beautiful. Mm hmm. So, I mean, I'm, you know, but I, I kind of just had a little twinge when I heard the total, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, like that's not what I was expecting. No. no, it's expensive. But it is, again, something that I think is a worthy investment if you're an artist trying to sell your artwork. Mm-hmm. Or if you are giving art as a gift, mm-hmm. sometimes it's nicer. I mean, of course, when you make something for someone... It's always a wonderful gift. Mm-hmm. But if you want it to be presented, like I made, I gave my mom something recently that was just a little watercolor drawing that I did. And I thought, God, that would have been nicer if I would have framed it for her. Mm-hmm. Because 
you know, now it's just propped up because like it fell behind her dresser and she had to have my brother pull her dresser out to get it and all this stuff. But um, I think that it just as a gift kind of gives it a little bit nicer finish. As an artist, it gives you a little bit more of a professional edge. And just when you're hanging artwork in your house, mm-hmm. it can kind of make it look nicer. And it can also draw together, like, if you're doing, like, a gallery wall or something and you have different frames or different this or that. If you make the matting all the same, it kind of pulls them all together. Mm-hmm. So, and again, it's, it looks way better than sticking, like, all my art in my studio, like, my it's all stuck up with thumbtacks. Mm-hmm. That's like, how a lot of, yeah. You know. But Ian, you're not poking thumbtacks into, because I have a couple of prints that I hung when I was younger. That you like. That I that you used do. with thumbtacks and now I wish I hadn't have done that because now they have holes in the corners of them. And mm-hmm. I would like to have them framed, but I'm going to have to have it. I'm going to mat, I'm going to have to mat them and lose some of the border to cover the holes that I've put in them with thumbtacks. Mm-hmm. So, and they're not, you know, prints aren't always cheap. You're making an investment. I know we have a lot of cool prints from shows we've gone to, mm-hmm. like, and we, they're just rolled up in tubes. Yeah. I'm like, oh, we need to frame those. We do. And we're going to talk about how to. Okay. And you can use my stuff anytime. I have some artwork. My, my friend Robin gave me these and it was for, for a photography class that she took, Mm -hmm. but she had this challenge. They had to go take pictures of eggs in different scenarios and settings Mm -hmm. and different ways. And I just thought they were the coolest. She went to San Francisco to visit a friend of ours and they went to Chinatown. And so she took pictures of this egg in all these different stores in Chinatown. (laughs) And it just was cool. It was really neat. And so I have, she gave me, I think I have three of them framed. She gave them to me though. She had them blown up a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I just went to Ikea, which people, if you want some cheap frames, mm-hmm. go to mm-hmm. Ikea. Cause we're going to talk That's about ways to make too. them look better too. Yeah. But even just like the basic ones that I have were like, they were like two bucks a piece. Nice. But they, I've, it has always bothered me that they're not matted because they don't fit exactly in the frame. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, they're hanging on a wall so gravity makes them slide down to the bottom and you can see like the little white band across the top and i for this podcast i'm gonna get off my ass and get out the mat cutting tool that my in-laws gave me and they gave me a bunch of sheets of of matting and i am going to mat those and use them as an example excellent i'm gonna do it all right so are you gonna make a thin matting edge i mean yeah Okay, that's true. You don't have to do the wide, thick No, you matting. don't have to. Yeah. Okay. You can do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny. So, tools that you need mm-hmm. to cut matted. No, not, not everything has to be matted. Yeah. We'll get to that more, but matting's a thing, and I think that that's what, I feel like that's what intimidates people the most about having your artwork doing framing your artwork yourself Mm -hmm. is the matting that's always what's intimidated me the most Mm -hmm. it's not that big a fucking deal Mm -mm. really the matting the mat cutter what looks so nice and makes it look nice is the mat cutting tool has a blade at an angle yeah so you push it down in and you cut it and it makes that little beveled edge Mm -hmm. that just it really does it makes it look nice it does yep but it's just a cutting tool. You can learn how to use it. Mm-hmm. Just as it's literally just, it's like this little metal box almost. And it has a thumb hold mm-hmm. and you push down the thumb hold and it pushes the blade into the matting and you just slide it along the line. Mm-hmm. And if you're good freehand, you don't need the, the ruler bar. I'm not that good at making a straight line with something like that because it's hard to see the line. Mm -hmm. So you would line up the ruler bar. All it is is the matting, the freehand matting tool connects to it and slides on the rail. Nice. And it's just a straight edge. That's all it is. Yeah. Honestly, it's not that hard. Yeah. I don't feel like it's something that takes a lot of skill. Yeah. Not to put down people who professionally frame 
and matte artwork. Mm -hmm. But I think that it's something that you can do on your own. I'm more intimidated by the out, outer edge. Like if you were going to custom frame something and you needed a certain size. But here's the thing. <clears throat> All you do is you frame, use you know? the back of, oh, what you're talking about is like for frame Building size. the okay. outer edge. So we're going to get to that too. Okay. For making frames. So really quickly with the matting, I'm just going to use, um, take, this is for a store-bought frame. Mm -hmm. Take the fucking backing out. Use that as a template to cut out the size of the matting that you need. Mm -hmm. Then put your image on the matting centered where you want it. Trace that around. Use that as the template for the hole that you need to cut. You want the cut to be slightly smaller than the image that you're framing. Mm -hmm. Remember that because if you make it the same size, it's just going to fall out the hole. Yeah. <laughs> so you want it to be slightly smaller. And then you cut with the mat cutter. Mm -hmm. And you cut a hole in the middle and you make that nice beveled edge and then boom, you put it together. Yeah. You tape the picture. Actually, the way I've seen it done is you tape it in place from the front first, just loosely so it stays centered. Then when you flip it over and you can attach it to ah, the back of the matting okay. permanently yeah. with the tape and then release the tape from the front. Because you never notice, like, every once in a while when you're trying to do something like that, and then yeah. you tape it, and you're like, wait, that's crooked, and you have to redo it a few times. Yeah. So that was a tip that one of the pros gave was the, doing it from the front. Yeah, first. that totally makes sense. Um, so, yeah, that's it mm -hmm. as far as the mat cutting. That's what – I don't know why that intimidated me so much. But for frames, frames can be expensive. Custom frames are very expensive. Mm -hmm. But you can make your own frames for molding. Yes, that's or true. Or anything else. It doesn't have to be molding. Mm -hmm. But you can go get like crown molding or any size uh molding that you would use around your home, decorative mm -hmm. molding. Um I have a tiny little miter box with a handsaw. Mhm. Mm because molding's super small, like it's not huge. Mm -hmm. If you just buy it or you can make a miter box. It is a t a jig. For you, you slide the matting in or the molding in, and then you just use your handsaw in the guide to cut at the angle that you want. Oh. You're cutting them at 45 degree angle. If you don't have a saw and you don't have, or you don't have a miter saw, you don't have a miter box, you don't want to be bothered with it. Uh, Home Depot or Lowe's, any of those places cut stuff for you. At an angle like that? Mm -hmm. okay. They'll cool. charge you per cut. But you can have that shit cut. Mm -hmm. So just remember, it has to be like you. 45? Yeah. But 45 in opposite degrees. Like yeah. plus 45 and minus 45. Because you're, if you cut every end at plus 45, <laughs> then they aren't going to go together. Yeah. <laughs> so they need to be pointing. I Does outward make sense? Yes. They, all your sides need to be pointing outward so that they go together. I've done that before. I've like yeah. cut the, the, my mitered corners incorrectly and then been like, ah, oh, nothing fits. <laughs> it yeah. makes me angry. Yes. Um, really though, all you have to do is go get that molding, any wood. You don't even have to have mitered corners. Mm -hmm. You can just make, use block, like strips of wood and put them together. Mm -hmm. Just make a square. It doesn't That's have true. to be. Mitered corners are pretty, but they don't have to. It's not a requirement. My uncle did a cool thing with his, uh, daughter's uh, hockey picture um put used a hockey stick for the frame that's awesome yeah it looked cool that is really cool yeah and to join that if you're using wood all you need are wood joiners yeah they're little uh they're, it's a little you tap them in right? yeah little metal guys you want wood glue too mm -hmm. paint the wood glue on you do not need a thick layer because it's going to squish out. Mm -hmm. Paint it on both sides and then use the wood joiners mm -hmm. and it'll just dry wipe off your excess glue on the front. Some people go as far as filling the crack with like joint compound or wood putty and sanding it down. You don't even have to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't actually see frames that have that done to them very often. Yeah. So. But, and you can with the using molding, the sky's the limit on how fancy you want to go. It depends yeah. on how much money you want to spend, but it's still cheaper to go buy that shit 
mm-hmm. in a hardware store and paint it yourself. Yeah. And it has the divot already for the glass to fit mm-hmm. in and everything. So Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And you can get glass cut. I didn't, I wish I would have researched more about where to get glass cut. But I think that it's a matter of just doing a local internet search. Yeah. A glass shop. Yeah. Just they have, have glass shops. Dimensions. Have the cut for you. Um, and again, get the UV mm-hmm. filtered glass. And you can also use plexiglass too, which is mm-hmm. lighter and that comes in the UV filter. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that it scratches more easily, but mm-hmm. if it's hanging on the wall, it shouldn't be scratched. Yeah. So, and I would actually go with plexiglass for larger. Yeah. For just for the weight. Things just to keep yes. the weight down. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, I've had some shit pull out of the wall mm. and I learned a lesson about using Using proper anchors, that's another thing that you want when you're making your own frame is you want to buy the anchor to put on the back, Mm -hmm. but also using proper wall anchors and reading the weight limits. Yes. That's so important. For what they're intended to hold. Yes. Because like, I have, like, when we move in, move out of this place, I'm going to have to go around and putty a lot of holes because you're not technically supposed to use molly bolts Mm -hmm. when you're renting. Yeah. It's on your rental agreement. I promise you read it. But I yeah. always consider that like a suggestion. <laughs> I always fill holes though. Yeah. Before we leave, I always go through and fill and sand holes. So. Yeah. I fix the damage. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever. It's a little hole. Relax. Yeah. It's a stick out your butt. And knock on wood. Because I'm not going to do it out loud because my dog will bark. But <laughs> I've never not gotten my full deposit back nice when i have left a rental it's a thing with me yeah like i got my husband's deposit back when he moved out of his bachelor apartment wow in downtown portland i cleaned the shit out of that house wow that apartment and i spent like an hour with goo gone getting rubber cement or shoe goo out of his carpet that he spilled oh, all over boy. the place yeah so, anyway, I was just saying. Good job. Molly bolts are okay. Just fill the holes. <laughs> um, let me see. Where did we go? I got all sidetracked. Oh, well, so you can also buy used frames. I look for frames at garage sales. Mm-hmm. I look for frames at, like, there is the thrift store frame tax because they figured this shit out. Yeah, they have. I used to go buy cheap uh, frames at like Goodwill or mm-hmm. Value Village just because it was like crappy gross art. Mm-hmm. And then you can like frame it in, you could take the frame and just not feel bad about tossing the art. And you paid like five bucks for it. Mm-hmm. You can still find that around yeah. sometimes. So you have to look. Yeah. I think it's the bigger frames, though, that are the ones that the arts, the, like, the thrift stores are like, I know some fucker's going to buy this for mm-hmm. the frame only. Um, but I saw some cool ways to kind of freshen up frames. Yeah? Yeah. On the Pinterest board, I, I, I have some mat cutting technique tutorials and some frame building tutorials on the Pinterest board that'll show you step by step how to do the frames that we just talked about with the molding. Um, and without miter, with and without miter corners, but somebody glued a bunch of plastic dinosaurs in different shapes and sizes to the bottom and heavier on one side of this frame and then spray painted it all gold. Oh, cute. It was so fucking cool. <clears throat> yeah, that sounds really like, cute. So anything like that, like toy cars, like one thing I would caution against, I think it's okay when you're doing like when you're framing family photos. But what I would watch out for both in matting and framing is when you are framing artwork, it needs to complement but not overtake yeah. what you're framing. So uh, let's say you found this really cool red frame. I would not hang a piece of artwork that's like delicate blues or like a watercolor. <laughs> yeah. In a red frame, unless there was a red that you wanted to bring out, like maybe little dots of red or something like use caution, though. You don't want to use a matting like you can also 
I have just covered cardboard with fabric oh, or cardboard with fancy paper to make a mat for something. But use caution because you mm-hmm. don't want to have pick like a pattern or color scheme that is going to completely outweigh yeah. your image. Because the whole idea when you're when you're framing and matting a piece of artwork, you shouldn't go, ah, that's an awesome matting job. Cool frame. Yeah. You're supposed to go, oh, my God, this is such an awesome piece of artwork. It's not supposed to be noticed, really. Yeah. It's just supposed to blend into one. So... I've, I've, I've seen a lot of artwork like that, especially in family homes, like portraits and pictures and stuff that are just completely overwhelmed by mm-hmm. the frame and the mat. Yeah. And you, when you're choosing matting color or matting and frame colors, you want to really heavily consider the piece of artwork that you're framing mm-hmm. as well. Like think about that. Like maybe get some samples or some sample colors and hold it up against it or bring a photocopy uh, like a color copy of the art with you when you're shopping for that kind of stuff Mm -hmm. just to hold it up i mean it's just it's just like putting drapes in your house or yeah you you're you want to have an eye swatches and ideas of options yeah my friend um i bought this really cool uh kind of zentangle deer that my friend drew Mm -hmm. and um when i went to look at frames and they have pre-cut mats also Mm -hmm. usually that you can buy with the frames and i was looking and it was either like white or black and i was like oh like the black looked so much cooler because it was just black ink on white you know so white matting would have you know the yeah no it it framed it nicely i was like i'm so glad because you want to direct your eyes to the art yeah and she so was surprised I see, when like, she saw it. She's like, oh, black, that looks cool. Yeah. Like, oh. Because I think yeah. the black would make it pop more than the white. It would just kind of wash. Yeah. Yeah, it would, wash it out. Yeah. That's cool. Um, You can also just use cool shit to make frames, like a driftwood. Oh, yeah. Or sticks. Have you seen the stick frames? Like where people oh, put bundles yeah. of sticks together? And you can glue that onto exist like you could even just make a just glue like little strips of wood together and then glue those on top of that Mm -hmm. and you can use them natural colored or spray paint them or Mm -hmm. here's an idea glitter the fuck out of them glitter because glitter yeah love me some glitter (laughs) glitter is good okay and themes like when you're trying to group your artwork mm-hmm. in frames, you kind of, you can stick with the theme. That's why I was saying earlier, like you have all the same kind of frame or if you don't have all the same kind of frame, you have all this matching matting and it kind of just ties the group together. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about shadow boxes for a minute. Oh, they're so cool. Because they're really awesome and they're mm-hmm. a neat way to display like, I have one that I've been meaning to, I have some stuff saved away that I want to stick in a shadow box. I have my great, my great grandmother's beaded hand, little handbag. Aww. It's like a, just a little teeny tiny, like a coin purse kind of thing, but it's a drawstring. Cute. And I have a shot glass of hers that has her name etched on it that she only used for medicinal purposes. Because <laughs> she was a teetotaler. She did not drink. Except for medicinal purposes. <laughs> but I have that and I want to put that in a frame in, in a shadow box with maybe some family pictures in the background That'd or so something to tie it together. But even, even if you're not displaying sentimental stuff, shadow boxes can be used. Shadow boxes can be used just for portraits or mm-hmm. pictures hanging. Um, like we talked about last week using uh your cut paper art and layering it in a shadow box Mm -hmm. so it makes it like a deep story and you're looking into it like you can do really really neat things with shadow boxes one of my favorite things i got what pieces of art i got was this woman makes fairy outfits out of stuff from her yard those are so cute yeah she puts them in shadow boxes 
So there's like a little chair she made with the little fairy shoes on it and the dress like on a form. Oh my like gosh. It's, it's so beautiful. I love it so much. And just being in a shadow box makes it that much cooler and. And it protects your it art protects too. Protects it. Yeah. It Cause this is art. delicate like flowers and leaves mm-hmm. and bark and stuff that she uses. I love it so much. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, you can also create a shadow box, a slight shadow box effect with matting. Because yeah. you can use, if you cut, like, the foam core, mm-hmm. you can use, um, make little bumpers between the matting and the work below it to kind of yeah, that's how lift the matting out. off the work. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in, like, I think that my mom used to do that when she framed some of her pressed flower work. Mm-hmm. Or you're using dried flowers in a range you, you want to frame. Or I've seen little stone sculptures or paper cut sculptures that are attached to something or a, a, a backing. Mm-hmm. So you maybe just there you want a frame. You don't want them to be lost in the depth of a shadow box, right? But you kind of want them to have, a, or you don't want the glass to touch it. Like yeah, it, it and it, it creates a little bit of a shadow box effect, but it's really cool. Yeah. And that's just done literally by making little widgets to stick in there and bump it up. Mm-hmm. So, and you'll have a deeper frame, of course. Yeah. But, and a great source of any kind of frames or um, shadow boxes are in your craft stores in the unfinished furniture section, too. I oh. meant to mention that. They have all kinds of stuff in the unfinished, not furniture, but, you know... Unfinished wood section mm, okay. is what I meant to say. And then yeah. you can also find um, uh, molding and that kind of stuff in craft stores as well. And what about canvases? So framing canvases is a little bit trickier. Mm-hmm. Um, you need to... Or can you can, just attach it to the side well, of the wood Well, what you do is you there. make it... It's just like it has a deeper pocket oh, okay. that it goes into. It's a deeper frame. We know well, you don't have to use glass, really. No, no, no. You don't. You you don't want to cover canvas with glass. Yeah, really. you don't need to. Um, I am planning actually an episode on preparing your own canvases. Oh, cool. So I will make sure that we cover frames for canvases in that episode. Cool. Because I have, I have a frame that I can use as an example too. Because I when my friend. When I, in the art group I belong to, we went and got, uh, we did the adding monsters to the landscape paintings that you mm-hmm. find at thrift stores. The frame was super ugly, so I pulled it off. But we'll go over how to do that and how to, when we talk about it, you're preparing canvases. Nice. So, but yeah. Take the time to frame your artwork, though, people. Yeah. It'll make you feel much better about your art collection. I know. I keep thinking about, I should have framed that, the watercolor I did. I, I should frame it. it. See? There's a fucking thumbtack in it. I stuck <laughs> it to my golden bowl with a thumbtack. It's okay. I'm terrible. No. It it was a whimsical thing I did. Yeah. But it would look neat in a frame, Yeah, probably. but even like those little, my little grouping of, um, we did Day of the Dead stuff in another oh, art yeah. swap that I did. Yeah, it could be in a collage type frame. Yeah, that could, I could put them in little frames. I could just make little frames for them. And mm-hmm. those are all small, tiny canvases, like the board, canvas board. Oh, yeah. So. And there's probably like a million tutorials out there on how to frame canvas board, how to frame canvas. Oh, huh? yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. And, we'll, and, I'll, and I'll have tutorials on the Pinterest board for this episode for sure. So. Nice. You can go look at it. Lonnie, I'm starving, man. Me too. I think that's all. Okay. I think I'm done. Hungry. I'm hungry too. We're going to go <laughs> eat some fucking lunch. Hell yeah. I don't remember what we're talking about next week because I have not planned that far ahead. <laughs> but it's going to be cool, whatever Oh, it heck is. yeah. It's going to be really awesome. Guaranteed. I actually have some fun stuff planned um, for the summer. I'm kind of trying to do out artwork that you can do outside and maybe like stuff you can do with your kids. And Lonnie and I are trying to plan a trip to the beach to interview an artist, a metalsmith. But also while we're there, I want to do like a beach art session, like gathering things and maybe making sand candles. And I don't know. We'll see where that goes though. But anyway, uh, until next week, go make some cool shit. Yo, do it now.
<laughs> I always wait for you to say that. <laughs> Good morning, Katie. This is your friend. I'm recording on the new test cam. I'm trying to figure out what the buttons do. But every once in a while, I take a break to poo.